Greetings. Now has it finally happened? What is the it I'm referring to? An innovation in the way money printing is done and a realization that money printing has to rise exponentially. Well, there are early indicators that may be pointing in that direction, but we shall see. So these are the four central banks that comprise 85 to 90 percent of the entire world's money printing, and the U.S. Federal Reserve is in red. 8.1 trillion dollars done. Now money printing is borderless and technological deflation is also borderless, so only the worldwide number is an accurate picture. So the sum total of these four is this, and anyone who is a longtime viewer of this channel and of my monetary creation reports is very familiar with this particular topic. This has been rising exponentially, and then the tightening that many central banks feel they had to do after doing all this COVID-19 stimulus is underway, but it's been meandering for several months. And I, of course, say that this tightening does not have to be done because this is an exponential trend matching technological deflation, which means money printing should already be here just to keep up with technological deflation. Every time they have tried to deprint, there has been a stock market correction and other recessionary indicators that has forced them to print more money again. And that has happened four or five times, and ideologically, all those PhD economists are relying on economic assumptions from textbooks written 50 to 70 years ago, so they still think money printing causes inflation, and when they don't see the amount of inflation that would correspond to this level of money printing, they're quite content to ignore reality because their job security and stability of their career progress does not require them to be accurate in their predictions or rethink assumptions. That's why PhD economists are extremely theoretical, unless something has changed. So let's go to the U.S. balance sheet, which is just this red line. Again, it's better to look at worldwide metrics, but we don't have the same granularity with all of these measurements of central bank balance sheets. So this is the U.S. Federal Reserve balance sheet, that same red line we saw before. And let's go to the five-year chart. You can see there was a slight tightening, then the COVID-19 printing, and then even more printing, and now they're trying to tighten again. And now let's go to this one-year chart for more granularity here. They were tightening, the quantitative tightening of $95 billion a month, as they speak about, and then about $300 billion of bailout printing for Silicon Valley Bank. I described this in great detail in this video up here in the upper right hand corner, which is a three part series. And the premise is that that was a one off bank bailout, and then the tightening would resume because the slope of this line and the slope of this line is the same. But when they're already setting a precedent that if a bank fails, they will bail out the bank with printed money, and an inverted yield curve fundamentally does cause banks to fail because that is contrary to the business model of banks in the United States in the first place, this will keep happening. So they are printing more and more money with bank bailouts as the cover. But maybe this was a one-off until more banks fail and they have to do more bailouts, which is more money printing, and we still did not have any other indication that beyond this one-off, anything fundamental may have changed. Until we now look at the M2 money supply chart. This is the supply of M2 money in the United States. There used to be something called M1 money, which was the most liquid type of money, checking accounts and so forth. This is a superset of that. So checking accounts, savings accounts, cash and brokerage accounts, liquid cash, but not as liquid as M1. And M2 is more comprehensive. So going back to 1960, you see another exponential trend. The accelerating rate of change is visible over here, even though this is just the United States. Now we go to a 10 year measurement. This is the trend line. The COVID-19 printing got us above trend and therefore we're seeing a huge tech boom as well as a small amount of inflation, but half of that inflation spike is because of the oil spike from the Russia-Ukraine war, of course. And then the tightening that we saw in the balance sheet corresponds to this decline, but then what's happening here? Has the decline stopped? Let's go to the one year chart. This is the one year chart. M2 was going down. Now we saw that $400 billion blip from the Silicon Valley bank bailout, which was in March or so. And from that point in April, we saw a reversal. May, June, and July are what we have so far. And this is not going down, it's going up. Under this old trajectory, this should already be down here, which is a full trillion dollars less in M2. Instead, it's over here. Going back to this five-year chart, 
this should be down here rather than here. Now, is this a blip because of that Silicon Valley bank bailout? Or has the U.S. Federal Reserve decided that they need to print money in a manner that does not appear on the balance sheet because all the anti-printing, inflation-obsessed people, conservatives and gold bugs and so forth, are making too much noise and the Federal Reserve has to print in an even more covert manner? That would imply a lot of things. That would mean that PhD economists have finally figured out what I have been saying for years, and I've sent a lot of letters to the Federal Reserve, so it may have reached the right people. I've even gone to conferences and so forth. Maybe we've finally gotten through to them, and they are printing more money, but they have political pressure in their accountability to the U.S. Congress that they have to not expand the balance sheet. And since the people who think they understand inflation are saying, look at this Federal Reserve balance sheet, and the Federal Reserve says, okay, you are equating inflation with the balance sheet, so we won't increase the balance sheet. We are going to print money in a way that is off balance sheet. If that is the case, that has many implications. The stock market may not correct, even though all classical indicators would point to a correction based on all the crash watch videos I've done. We may not have a housing and real estate bust, or at least not one as severe as has been anticipated under all classical models. And the extent of my criticism of PhD economists can be dialed back somewhat because they have, in fact, thought differently and come to their senses about how money printing does not cause inflation. Because if they're printing more than the balance sheet indicates, then everything I speak about on that Yardeni report is not even all of the printing that's being done. There's additional printing being done. That is if this is a fundamental change in the trend. We so far only have these three months of data. When I saw this the first time, I didn't want to do a video about this, nor the second time. And it is flattening out, so the odds are it still has a lot to do with that Silicon Valley bank situation. But the next two months will tell us more. If this goes back down and resumes its downward trajectory, just like that Federal Reserve balance sheet that we just saw before this, then this is a one-off blip. But if this fundamentally does not fall, even though the balance sheet is falling, that is evidence of off-balance sheet printing, and all of the assumptions have to change. An expectation of a stock market correction, an expectation of a real estate bust, etc. would have to change, and I would have to give credit where credit is due that PhD economists are finally, finally figuring things out after I've been saying this for many years and sent them a lot of letters. But the coming months will tell us whether this is accidental or deliberate by the divergence of these two lines, the U.S. Federal Reserve balance sheet and the M2SL line. And again, this is U.S. only. What is happening in Japan, China, and Europe remains to be seen in terms of the quantification of money printing. If they're also doing off-balance sheet money printing, that means money printing is much more than even that Yardeni report indicates. I'm going to send an email to Ed Yardeni and notify him about this and have him start to think about that. But the next two months will reveal all about this. Now, if you like this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. And thank you very much for watching.